Some students have been asking, have been, have been posing some questions that show that they have, uh, they have been evolving into a very interesting path. One of these questions, one of these days, was about my, about what is hidden inside the concept of my. And this question was, how is it possible that we can surpass or reach the enemy going through his own volume of action, going through his guard, his defense. Note that this question was not about the posture itself, but how to beat the distance. There are many ways to approach this question. I can still remember when I was in Uchideshi and uh, I asked one question like this to my master, Chitoshi Jordan Augusto, yeah, at that night, there was just the two of us in the school. And then he called me near him and told me what later I knew it was a kuden, that is, uh, a piece of knowledge that is passed from master to student only. It is not written anywhere, it is not present in any matrimonio, or it's not registered on any document of any kind. And uh, it concerns timing and my. So, that whole conversation uh, that happened about, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 years ago, concerned how to beat the distance. That is, well, it is easy to understand if we are, if there are two men with the same physical um, portions, okay? And then we are in a particular kamai, anyone saying we are here, so we can find a balance. If I can reach him, he can reach me as well. If I can touch him, he can touch me as well. Okay? Now, what happens when we go to Kenjutsu? Our volume of action has increased. I can reach a further distance. Especially if I treat the Bokuto or the sword as an extension of my body. However, we both are holding a katana, a Bokuto. So we are still balanced concerning our volume of action and the, the, the distance we can manipulate, right? But something happens when we go to different situations, different scenarios. What happens, for example, if I'm using a bow, a long step, and he's using a bokuto, the bow was developed to be used against the katana, that is, postures and movements that um, do not allow him to cut me or my weapon, but I can hit him, strike him. However, if we measure one against the other, one is nearly twice the other. And the same thing happens if I have a Shinken, a real sword. Against a Bokuto, we can find that, of course, the Bokuto is nearly, has nearly the same length of this Shinken, particularly. The bow is almost twice the Shinken length. If we carry the situation from the bow, uh, towards the, the sword, I will try to use the advantage of the of the length of the greater length of the bow for me. Okay, I'll uh, suppose he will try to uh, to come close to me so he can find his mapo, please. Exactly. So he has to uh, to beat all these distance. So taking advantage that he's going to he's going to try to find me, what I'm going to do is use this my for me. Even if he continues to lower his katana, he won't find me. But I will hit him. This is a, a case, a classical case of Kotopeng. 
Mage Ball wins. However, it is also found in Makimono and studied in many uh, schools the opposite case. That is, when a Kenshi has to confront someone with a ball. What happens now? I have to find means, I have to uh, employ a particular uh, set of thoughts and principles that will allow me and my form to reach him and to uh, beat the distance. So, suppose he enters, and I am here, that is one particular my eye. If he enters, and I am here, it's another particular my eye, in which I am already closer to him, and I have uh, imposed or managed the, the distance for my advantage. We can extend this to any other kind of weapon. Suppose now that and I am employing a naginata. Okay, so the question is, what is he going to do to keep himself protected? And what am I going to do to use the, ex the length of the naginata for my own advantage? The same thing happens. I will try to make my own eye I will try to use the leverage and the extra length of the Naginata uh, and very often, more often than not, lead him to a trap. I am uh, on purpose opening a gap and I am then inviting him to, to cut me. However, for him to cut me, he has to, to beat this distance. So he went there. Exactly. He, as an experienced Kenshi, recognize that this is a distance that he can beat, he can uh, uh, move until here and cut me. However, once I'm here, as he enters, I can still have my own Ma'ai, and I can still cut him uh, in the Ma'ai of the Naginata. Now, in this particular case, the student has asked me about the usage of small or shorter weapons such as a shuriken against uh, like he said, uh, the danger of a live blade instead of a bokuto. Well, this is a many, um, a many stages question. First of all, uh, it is a mistake to think that only a shinken or a live blade is dangerous. In our school there are three ways, and all of them are complementary to each other, for the formation of a student using a sword. First of all is uh, with a bokuto, then with a yaito, and then with a shinken. The, uh, the kind of hold, the pressure that your, your fingers, your palm, and your, your arms, that they, the pressure that they have to apply are very different. Opposite to what many people think, the true strength of your hold in Atsuka does not come from the, from the practice with a yaito, or a Shinken, but uh, from the practice with a Bokuto. So, for any experienced Kenshi that has practiced the ancient exercises using bamboos, long ears, uh, for strengthening his, his hold and his, his grip, this is a very dangerous man. Wherever he touches with a Bokuto, breaks, breaks a bone. If he touches your wrist, your wrist breaks. If he touches uh, even without his full power, a shoulder, the shoulder breaks. You know? So, of course, those are actually two different weapons, a Bokuto and a Shinken, but each one carries its own danger, especially uh, on, on the hands of someone who has practiced for long periods with the right exercises concerning Kenjutsu. The other, another part, another stage of this question is how can I beat the distance and reach someone using a shinken. He said to me, it seems it's impossible. I won't ever get close to him if he really won't allow me to get close to him. Well, as a matter of fact, we, as we study in our school, it is very difficult for anyone with his bare hands or a short weapon, such as this, to get near someone or to win over someone who is experienced and is carrying uh, a shinken. 
However, there are some studies uh, in which he is holding just a tanto or just a shuriken and he has to do the, the best he could with this. The same thing happens with the Shinken Shira Hadori or Shinken Shira Hadome in which he has nothing but his own hands and there is an opponent attacking him for his life with a Shinken. Well, just as every other art, there are the the mechanisms that one can use to try to win over his opponent. The unbalance in the Ma'ai can of course be overwhelmed. It is not easy, it is not guaranteed, and there are no safe postures. As a matter of fact, there are no safe postures for anything at all. Okay, we may be walking on the street, we may sleep and hit our head on something. And uh, we can also be using a perfect technique in a Kenjutsu and therefore uh, found ourselves in very difficult situations. Let's first of all separate, uh, distinguish properly what are forms, kata, what is practice and what are real situations. Let's illustrate some few scenarios that are studied uh, in the free forms of our school, apart the kata, suppose he will attack me first. He is convinced, he is sure that he will take my life. First of all, I will move in such a way that I will try to enter at the same time that he is attacking me. He attacks me and I have this distance to overwhelm. If we think twice, it is not that different. Suppose I'm here and this distance that I have to overwhelm, that is this. If we measure this distance, it is just about the distance that I have to overwhelm when he performs a mako. Not like this. But when he enters, Now like this. If he attacks me, I'll have to fight on me to enter. Now you'll see, from here, I will have no time to enter on an eye or a throat or something in the same time slot that he is here. What I mean is, when I will enter, he may retreat, cutting me exactly. At the same time that he is attacking me and he is shortening the, the distance, it is shortening for both of us. That is, once he enters, even if I am just here, I still have access to points in the same proportion of the distance that he has shortened. That is one perspective. Okay? When he shortens the, the distance for attacking me, and it has shortened otherwise. From this perspective, we will all fall to this case. For him to cut me, even if he stretches his arms the most he can, that is not the usual for a cut like a makogiri or a kesagiri, this is it. The distance that I have to, uh, to overwhelm is always this for his head, this for his arm, this for his trunk, this for his head. Okay? So just like any other weapon, in, in, in any other case, for him to cut me, he has to get somewhat close to me, near me as well. So this is a first approach. A second approach is, well, what if he knows that I am, um, uh, that I have uh, martial skills and that I won't let this happen without uh, putting up some fight? Okay, then he may act as a careful Kenshi and he'll be always on guard. Then what he's going to do is he'll be always in a Seiba no Kamai situation, for example, in which he has the, blade, the length of the blade protecting him and he'll come getting close to me and then he is closing the distance between the two of us. And therefore, it is much more difficult to me, this is a vector. And it is uh, in line with me, aligned with me. 
Therefore, if I try to move, he will just follow me as in an arc, as in an angle. Okay? Wherever I try to go, he will just follow me and close the distance. So when he feels that he is safe and sure enough of his final attack, he can then make, for example, a tsuki. Exactly. Or he can cut me in a, a very short mako. Exactly. What he's doing is he's minimizing the chances of mistake. You know? Well, for this scenario, there are uh, a, a, a very interesting borderline for both of us. First of all is, he is getting close to me, so I will not have the opportunity of uh, enter as he is entering as well. If I get any, any closer to this, he will cut me, he will pierce me. This is a situation in which we don't want to be. Uh, I must prevent him to to get close to me and to close the, the distance like that. I have to uh, make sure to know the environment where I am so he won't be able to use that. For that there are shields of any kind, human shields at that time, objects, um, walls, corners, objects that I may use for me so he won't be able to get that close to me. So this is the importance of knowing Kankyo that is using the environment for you. So here we have a small table. So is there in a Seven of my situation and I will, will use this so he won't be able to reach me easily. It doesn't have to be a big object. The minimum distance that he has to run to catch me is this. If there is anything else between us, he won't be able to reach me if I manage to stay apart from him. In this case, what I'm using is a small piece of furniture that was common to that time and common to these days too. He can be as extended as he wishes. He can touch me as long as he is there as I'm here. Now, there is another case, that is, let's disregard Kankyo Jutsu, okay? And let's put him at ease to move as he wishes. This is the distance that I needed to catch him. I'm not fencing with a knife. I may take one or two movements. And when he is finally sure of, of whatever attack he will try to do, In what relies this performance that I have just made? The idea, the core idea of uh, this movement was my, my start, my first impulse, that is the charge that I have when I first start the movement. The only charge that I need is a charge in which I get close enough to touch him, say, a finger, a wrist, a tendon, a, a key tendon, uh, or an organ. A highlight of this approach is the danger of a real blade. We can see this is a tanto, this is actually a, a thick tanto. You can see it has a thick blade. And this is uh, a car tire, you know, say for the G.
Fair enough. Now, this is a stiff rubber. Can we just imagine what happens when someone in a desperate state, when he is fighting for his life, the power and the damage that will happen you know, in the other person? I mean, uh, um, concerning the question of my student, the danger um, may be seen from the point of view of just touching, just being able of just overwhelming the distance enough to touch him. Now oh, he is holding a shinken. This is the same shinken that I have used for uh, practicing Tameshkiri in one of those previous videos you may have seen in our uh, YouTube channel. A third scenario, we are unfavored by the Tanto. Many principles of Jujutsu and Kumyuji rely exactly on this case. That is, he will enter strong in a Makogiri, for example. Say so he is here already. So it is, he is faster and he enters. And I am here, I don't need more. Okay? Kidneys, ribs. face, neck, he saw that I am in a fighting position, I'm guarding myself, so he won't just attack me and give me the opportunity. Well again, this is all that I need. So he can't move, he can't cut, and I still have internal organs, abdomen, okay, it's ribs, and many vital organs, vital targets, or primary targets, as we say. Well, these were three of the scenarios uh, that we study in our school when it comes to uh, Shinken Shira Hadori, Shinken Shira Hadome, Tanto Tai Shinken or Tanto To Shinken. Once again, it is it is an unfavorable situation for the one that is applying the technique with a Tanto. However, it is a situation that happened in ancient Japan, and as in any military situation, we strive to manage or defenses, or guards, or protections, or resources, 